Hey everyone, this video is going to help you get started downloading Microsoft Access from the DreamSpark site that we've given you access to or any other software that they've got. So before you watch this video, you should have received an email that looks like this one right here. BYU ISIS DreamSpark account has been created for you. I've already actually gone through the process of setting up my account. So what you do will be a little bit different from me, but you're going to start by clicking on this complete your registration link. So start there. You'll be taken to a page on the DreamSpark site that will ask you to create a password and some other stuff like that. Um, since mine's already been created, it's going to pop up with a little message here saying, Error, your account's already up and going. Let's give this a second to load. All right, here's that page. So for you, you'll come to some page that wants you to uh, you know, uh, create a password and then log in. Sorry, I can't walk you through that part since I've already done it. However, if it doesn't automatically sign you in once you've created your password, come up here and click sign in. All right, let's put in the email address that you use on Learning Suite that you were registered with. That's your username. Put that in. Okay, now I'm signed in. Let's go to the home page and just click on this DreamSpark link right here. Okay, logged in. Scroll down. You'll notice on the home page we have Access 2010. Now they actually have Access 2013 as well. Not sure why they're trying to advertise this one here, but anyway, you might fall into one of two categories. If you're already on a PC, all that you need to download is Access 2013. However, if you're on a Mac and you're trying to set up Boot Camp, Parallels, VMware, something so you can run Windows and Access, you're going to need to download both an operating system, which is Windows 7 or Windows 8, as well as Access. So either way, whether you're on a Mac or a PC, let's start with Access. And uh, we'll do that by getting the latest version by going over here to Applications so that we can skip 2010 and get right to 2013. Okay, we'll scroll down here, and here you are on the first page, Microsoft Access 2013. Let's click on that. Okay, scroll down here, and you'll see the cost is free. Um, I'll add it to my cart, but when you do the same, um, you'll get a bit of a different message. I've already added this to my cart and checked out before, so it's going to tell me it's already in your cart. What are you trying to do? But for you, just finish the process. Um, the next page will bring up something like a you know zero dollars, zero cents. Um, it'll bring up an end user license agreement. It'll want you to click accept. Just go through that whole process until you get to the same page I'm about to get to. Right. Oh, actually, no. Let's see. I need to click on your account and orders. So after you've already checked it out, um, paid zero dollars for it, you can come back here to your account and orders, and you can access it again at any time. Although, don't forget, at the end of this semester, you'll lose the ability to uh, download new pieces of software. You'll still be able to go back and get your previous orders for a while, even after this semester. Um, however, you won't be able to get new stuff. So, I think a lot of students are on right now, which is why this is going so slow. Let me pause again and wait till this is ready. Okay, let's scroll down here. Here's the orders I've had before. Access. Okay. All right. So your first time through after you've checked checked out and agreed to the end user license agreement, you'll get to a page like this. So things to take note of, here's your product key. You'll need to save this somewhere if you want to download the file. You also uh, have the option down here to pay for $14 disk to have access burnt to. Well, They'll give you a professional Microsoft disk in the mail. You don't need that. You don't have to have it unless you really want it. You can just download the file and uh, save the file and save the product key. We'll come back to this. For now, this download process will likely be a bit different to most of you, unless you're familiar with uh, ISO files. So let me explain how it works here. Click the Start Download button. Wait for this to pull up. Okay. 
So the first time you run this, you're going to have to download their secure download manager installation, installation file. You're going to click on this link right here. It's going to pull up a little download. I'm in Google Chrome, so it's going to pull it up down here on the taskbar. Um, go ahead and install that. It's just a normal electronic software installation file. You'll double click it. You'll run it. I'll open it. Open mine up here. Run. You'll get the window installer. Um, I've already installed this, that's why I'm getting this screen, but you're just going to click next, 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 finished. Um, you'll get a different screen and go ahead and finish out the installation. I'm going to cancel out of this instead though. Once you're done with that, you're going to come back to this page right here and you're going to download what's called the .sdx file. Now this also isn't the actual access installation. This is what's called a .stx, the bigger the number down here in the lower left corner. Go ahead and double click that or open it up from where you, wherever you've downloaded it. And then you're going to see this page right here once it comes up. Here we go. All right. So DreamSpark says, all right, we are ready to download. Here's your secure download manager that you just installed. So go ahead and hit start download. I'm going to pause this now and wait until this finishes downloading all 636 megabytes. Now, remember, keep in mind, some students have had trouble downloading this on campus because of BYU's firewall. You may not have a problem at all, but if you do, just know that you need to go off campus somewhere and try download, downloading it and you'll be just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this now until uh, it's all done. All right, download's all done. Go ahead and click launch. Okay, sorry, what it wants to know here is where it saved that file. So by default, it'll save it to downloads. And scroll down, here we go, access 2013. So here you can see the file that it's stored, .iso. Now you've got a couple of options here. If you're doing this with Microsoft Windows so that you can set up boot camp on your Mac, you're going to have to double click on this and burn it to a DVD. So by double clicking, it's going to open up by default whatever program you have on your computer that's used to burn DVDs. So in this case it's saying, okay, what do you want to burn from? What's the source? It's my disk image file, that .iso that we just downloaded. And then where do you want to burn it to? Well, you have to put a DVD into your DVD drive and then click copy. So I've already done this. I don't need to do it again. But if you need to do this um, uh, with Windows, if you're installing Windows, this is going to be necessary. Put the DVD in, copy it, let it finish. When it's done, it'll spit the DVD out. I would take it out, mark it up with a marker, and um, then you'll use that DVD in Boot Camp. So if you're not installing Windows, though, and you're just wanting to install Access, you can skip this process entirely. You can go ahead and do this, burn access to a DVD, and then when you when it's done, you can slide the DVD right back in and install from your DVD just the way you normally would. Or, I'm going to close out of this and give you another alternative. You can download a program that will create what's called a virtual DVD drive on your machine that you can virtually or uh, burn this file to a disk and then install from it. So here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to leave this here like it is. I'm going to close this out too. We don't need this anymore. And instead I'm going to search on Google for free magic ISO. Okay, we're going to want the first item that comes up right here. Freeware magic ISO. Open this up and here we've got a few options. Download for whatever you happen to have. I've got Windows 7 so you'll go ahead and download it. All right, wait for this to finish. Double click. There we go. We're going to say yes, even though we downloaded from the internet, we trust it. Let it run. Okay, since I already have Magic ISO installed, I'm going to skip the rest of this. However, you will need to go through and click next until it's all done. Just accept the default um, options that it gives you. Yep, I'm going to exit setup. Go ahead and pause this if you need to so that you can finish that installation process. Okay, so 
this says uh, ignore this you won't get this message just because I canceled out of it I'm just gonna hit cancel okay once you've installed magic ISO you might have this little icon over here in the in your system tray it's called so you won't see it here you have to click on this little arrow and you're looking for this little hand holding a disk if you don't have that that's alright come over here to the start menu and you're going to find it in your list of programs magic ISO let's see or magic disk excuse me right there and then you're gonna open up magic disk and then you'll have the little hand in the icon over here I've got it twice now so I'm gonna get rid of one of them okay if you didn't find magic disk pause this video and you probably didn't finish the installation process correctly you might try that again um, if you if, it, if you do have it if you find that little hand we're going to now right click on this little hand holding a disk and you'll see these options okay you want virtual CD DVD ROM drive and you won't see this big ugly name right here I'm gonna unmount that what you'll see when you right click on that remember make sure you're right clicking and not left clicking to get this menu you'll see this D no media we want to do what's called mount a disk image so what we're gonna do is it's going to what it's going to mount a, a virtual or fake DVD drive in computer memory and make it think that you've already burned it to a DVD and that the DVD is installed and ready to go. So the way we do that is we click mount and then we're going to navigate and find our way to that uh, that file that we just downloaded. And if you remember it's in your downloads folder. So to help you find it I'm going to click on desktop first then go to the folder with your name in it and then we're going to find the downloads folder right here. Open it up you'll find this access 2013 folder double click to select that .iso file and now what will happen if it doesn't automatically open up it should pop up a well for some of you it might pop up a little image that a window that looks like what you'd get if you installed or, or put the DVD into the drive and, and let it run if you didn't get that we're gonna right click here on the magic ISO icon again and this time you'll see this file mounted and instead of clicking mount we're going to click browse CD so remember it's virtual it thinks that there's a CD or DVD in there and then we'll come here and click setup.exe and run that okay yes we want to install access give it a second here alright so this looks like what you get if you put in a DVD to install, right? So accept the terms of the agreement, continue, and you want to install now. Now, I've actually already installed Access on this machine, so it may install over it or it may not. Anyway, for you, you're going to need to come back here and get your license key while you're waiting for this to install. So back here on this order summary page, come down to your product key and you might consider copying this and saving it into like a word document or a text file and placing that in the same folder that your access ISO is downloaded with just in case you ever need it again and then for if in case for some reason you don't uh, have access anymore to this site looks like you're only going to be able to have access for the next uh, two years and by that I mean you'll only, you'll only be able to log into this website to retrieve it for the next two years so if you think you'll want it longer than that, go ahead and copy this product key and save it somewhere on your machine permanently. So to copy this, I've selected it. Oops, there we go, selected it. And then I'm going to hit Control C. And now it's officially copied in the computer's memory. Click back here on our installation file. And at the appropriate time, yours might already be ready for a license key. You're going to hit Control V to paste it in. At this point, I think most of you are pretty good. Um, again, you don't have to use this magic ISO to install Access. This is just the option you can have if you don't want to burn it to a DVD before installing it. Let me know if you guys have any questions or talk to your instructor or the TAs in the 204 lab. And uh, good luck getting this ready for class.